batting sixth, George Walter, number nine, third base. Number seven, Peter Hill, number 22, left field. And hitting number eight, Justin Seibert, number 37, right field. Hitting ninth is John Cranville, number 11, playing center field. The pitcher for the wrestlers, number 20, Scott Life. And now for the Kelly's Pub Bulldogs. Batting first, Colin Walsh, number 11, the pitcher. Batting second, Jeff Evely, number 10, the shortstop. Batting third, Matthew Waugh, number 8, center field. Batting fourth, Ryan Kirk, number 33, the catcher. Batting fifth, Daniel Dalton, number 4, the second baseman. Batting sixth, Brian Clark, number nine, first base. Batting seventh, Stephen Strap, number five, third base. Batting eighth, Eddie Heffernan, number six, left field. Batting ninth, Mark Lewis, number 12, to designate the player. Andrew Wade. Number two is playing right field. Good morning and welcome to Pepperell Field here at the Caribou Complex in St. John's, Newfoundland for Championship Sunday here at the 2016 Men's Senior Canadian Championships. Lance went alongside my broadcast partner Chris Abbott. Glad you've woken up bright and early to join us here as we continue with this elimination round here in the playoffs, of course, leading up to eventually the championship game where the Hitmen will be awaiting. This matchup features Kelly's Pub out of Newfoundland and the Boulier Rustlers. And I will go through the batting order in a moment. But first, Chris, when we talk about these two teams, I mean, not an easy road for Kelly's Pub. No, yesterday was a long day for Kelly's Pub. They played the morning game, and it was an extended morning game at that as they went 11 innings with the Galway Hitmen who are waiting in the championship game. They then had to rebound in the evening game and come from behind and they were able to eliminate Devin McCullough and the Saskatoon Poly Plus Angels so that got them here today and maybe the surprise is the Bollier Rustlers as they knocked off both Ontario entries yesterday a 4-1 win over Alvinston and then turned around just a couple of hours later and eliminated the Kitchener Hallman Cubs so Scotty Life had a big day 2-0 yesterday and he's going to be back on the mound for the Rustlers in this one. Well, he'll be called on to uh, to shoulder the load and go through the batting order for the wrestlers. It'll be Josh Jordan to lead things off. Troy Gordon is in the two spot. Corey Crenville bats three. Dean Holine is the cleanup hitter. Mike 
Lawton bats five. George Flotre in the sixth spot. Peter Hill bats seventh. Justin Sievert in the eighth spot. And John Crenville round out the nine for the visitors. Rustlers defensively for Kelly's Pub here. It's Eddie Hefferin, Matthew Waugh, and Andrew Wade in the outfield left to right. Stephen Strap at third. Jeff Ebley's at short. Daniel Dalton at second base. Brian Clark's at first. And Ryan Kirk will be catching for Colin Walsh. And Colin Walsh has been the workhorse so far for Kelly's Pub. Absolutely. He went 11 yesterday morning against Galway. Then came in to close it down yesterday. And that pitch hit up the middle for a base hit. So Josh Jordan starting things off right for the Rustlers. He's got himself a leadoff single. And Josh Jordan with uh, tied with three home runs with the leaders in the round robin. He was the offensive catalyst for the Bollier Rustlers. And I must say, especially to our friends watching back in Saskatchewan this morning, Josh Jordan uh, unfortunately left off the tournament all-star team where I think he had earned himself a spot. But uh, we didn't get a vote. But from the broadcast booth all-star team, Josh Josh Jordan would have made the grade. So Troy Gordon now will step in with the leadoff man aboard here. Just underway at top of the first inning. And squaring the bunt, rise ball from Walsh is up and out. One ball. On the lineups that were submitted to us, Lance, they had Stephen Strapp listed as the starting third baseman. Since then, Kelly's Pub have made a switch. The DP, Mark Lewis, is now in to play at third, and Strapp will be the designated player. That pitch from Walsh in there for a strike, so squaring to bunt, but taking a strike was Troy Gordon. <laughs> One ball, one strike. And squaring a good bunt laid down. Got the job done, fielded, and over to first in time. So a good job there from Brian Clark to get that ball over. And an excellent sack bunt from Troy Gordon has Josh Jordan in scoring position, one away for Corey Crenville. Well, it looks like the moratorium on bunting has been lifted here for Championship Sunday, and we see some throwback fast pitch with a runner on and then a sack bunt to move him into scoring position for the three four hitters. So Corey Crenville will step in now with a chance to potentially open the scoring for the Rustlers. And they've done a good job of using the momentum. Two big wins yesterday, as you said, Chris, and that's propelled them and given them a spot here on Championship Sunday, fighting for the right to advance and with the ultimate goal, of course, an invitation to the final. The Rustlers were 2-4 and four in the round robin. They matched their tournament wins total yesterday with two more. These teams met all the way back in the opening game of the tournament, Lance. A 10-2 win for Kelly's Pub before the Rustlers found their form. Big swing and a miss there as Walsh took something off that drop ball. One ball, two strikes to Corey Crenville, the number three hitter. And a swing and a miss. So a good job by Colin Walsh to bear down there and strike out Corey Crenville. And that will bring up the veteran Dean Holine. Holine was one for six combined in the two games yesterday. Another one of the players, I think that's been the theme for the Rustlers here this week. They were a little slow starting off, but they've been hitting their stride. And if Holine starts to hit his stride, uh, it's good news for the Boulier Rustlers. Well, the fact that they're here on Sunday is that pitch is lifted up deep center field, making the track out there and getting it done was Matu Wa. So a runner stranded, leadoff hit goes for not. We've played a half inning. Scoreless ball game. Back here for the home half after this. Thank you. 
here at Pepro Field. Batting order for the Bulldogs from Kelly's Pub. It'll be Colin Walsh to lead things off. Jeff Evely is in the two spot. Matt Tuwa bats three. Ryan Kirk is the cleanup hitter. Daniel Dalton bats fifth. Brian Clark in the sixth spot. Steven Strap bats seventh. Eddie Hefferin is in the eighth spot. Mark Lewis will bat number nine. Defensively for the wrestlers, Peter Hills in left. John Crenville in center and Justin Sievert in right. George Flote, Flotre is on the hot corner. Troy Gordon at short. Josh Jordan at second. Mike Lawton at first. And Scott Life will be working to Corey Crenville. So a good inning anyway for Kelly's Pub. Anytime you can leave a leadoff man at second base or on base. And Kelly's Pub now with a chance here to uh, get there at bats. <laughs> And Walsh looks at a strike from Scott Life. And you got to figure these wrestlers, I don't think they were really expected to be here, Chris. And you got to give them credit. They're still alive after a slow start, but still here on Championship Sunday. Well, you know, credit given because nobody expected them to win the Saskatchewan Provincials. They did that. No one expected them to be one of the remaining four teams here this week, and they've done that. Scott Life with two complete games yesterday, giving up a combined just four hits and two earned runs while striking out 18. That pitch flared up and drifting foul. So, Lance, we've seen it time and time again. A guy gets on a roll, and is this going to be Scott Life writing the story here this weekend? The first couple of chapters are very impressive. Well, I think the only issue with either of these two teams is it's a bit of a long road to get to that final. you still got a couple more games to win. Got to win this one and another one. And when you sit back and see who's waiting, I believe you've got the Mastodons would be your next opponent. And then, of course, if you get past them, you will see the four-time defending champs. So no easy road, but I think uh, certainly a compliment that they fought their way to be in this ball game here this morning. That pitch is chop foul, so Colin Walsh in the hole. Well, there's no doubt that for either of these teams to win today is a monumental task. We're not going to pretend that it isn't. Just to win three games against anybody would be tough, and the Mastodons and the Hitmen are very formidable opponents for whoever gets through this morning game. Life to work, and a swing and a miss by Walsh, so he sat down via the strikeout, and that will bring up Jeff Evely, the shortstop. Well, I did say that uh, yesterday, Scotty Life had 18 strikeouts, and I would be remiss not to say 18 in life to go, and that's number 19. Yes, that's an early Skid Row reference. Okay, all righty. Good to know. Good morning to all of you out there. As that pitch is popped up and it's drifting on top of the Bulldogs dugout. A little more reach there is needed by Flotre. Yeah, George Flotre would have needed go-go uh, gadget arms there to uh, to get on top of that dugout. Evely's had a mixed bag of results here this week, but the veteran is has the trust of his coaching staff, and he's stuck in the lineup here. Well, you're right. We've seen Evely kind of ride the roller coaster where he's been flawless at short and then tough, cup play, uh, tough plays that he hasn't been able to, to finish on. But he's a gamer, and he's still out here and getting the job done as he looks at a strike from Scott Life. And Life has been around the strike zone so far with all his pitches here and appears to have good command in the early going. Well, one of the big things is getting ahead in the count, and, you know, we talk about it time and time again. Here he is again, up 1-2. And that pitch just missed. As you see, Corey Crenbill ready to fire that ball down the third base and move forward, but not the case. Well, if I was calling the balls and strikes from up here, now granted, it is uh, offset for us for sure, but that looked good. But today's home plate umpire, Mike Semchuk from Alberta, the veteran, disagreed. 
And over at third base today to complete the umpire list, we've got Mike French from PEI and at first base, Jocelyn Lacroix from Quebec. The outfield official is Trevor Topping. So the Blue Crew set for a busy day here on Championship Sunday, and Evely, big swing and a miss. So Scott Life continues ringing up that strikeout total. Back-to-back Ks will bring up Matthew Wah, and Matty Wah, of course, an up-and-down day yesterday. Struggled in their first game against Sean Cleary and the Hitman, and then battled his way back in their second ball game, and he was instrumental in the offensive attack attack of Kelly's pubs in game two. Yeah, not to mention his defensive play, but you're right, Lance. He had one strikeout through the entire round robin. He had three yesterday going one for seven in their two games. And a beautiful bunt laid down. Going to be a tough play to get Matty Waugh. No chance there as that's the Matty Waugh we've seen in the past couple of years, utilizing that speed and getting down a beautiful bunt. Well, just like Tiger Woods in his prime, you weren't catching him on Sunday. Matty Waugh and the superstars are here to play today, and nobody was catching him that time on that bunt. And you're right. We underplay the defensive prowess of Matthew Waugh. Got the job done yesterday out in center field and believe you me he was busy and he did a good job out there making all the plays he needed to Ryan Kirk now steps in that pitch from life is high ups for a ball Ryan Kirk 4 for 8 the best hitter overall average wise for the Bulldogs yesterday he had a double and a triple and an RBI and he's locked in there goes Matty Wad no chance not even a throw down so a good jump by Waz. He steals the base clean. And now a runner in scoring position. So the switch has been flipped here with Kelly's Pub able to now get a runner in scoring position. The question will be whether or not they can deliver. Corey Cramble and Scott Life just getting together to make sure of their sequence with the runner Wa on second. Make sure they're not giving away any pitch type or location. Well, anything in the dirt or even remotely gets away from Crenbill, you can bet Matty Waugh will be standing on third base. And chasing that rise ball was Kirk had a healthy hack but fouled it out of play. Yeah, Ryan Kirk is one of these hitters that uh, when he sees the rise ball in his eyes, he loves to go for it. But interestingly enough, Ryan has more of a down swing, so the drop ball is where he excels. So back to work is life here. One, two count. Nobody away. Runner on second base in Matty Wah. And a swing and a miss. And I apologize. There are two away. I'm not quite sure what's going on in that. It's been a tough day, a uh, uh, tough weekend. <laughs> definitely two away here. Yeah, Walsh and Evely struck out. So two away and a runner on second. So Kirk in need here of a clutch two out hit. And just staying alive using the hands was Kirk. Great job by Johnny Farrell, the first base coach over there. Farrell, a former All Canadian himself, and he knocked down that two hopper with his foot, made the play. And that ball driven out to left field. That's going to go over the fielder's head to the wall. Matty Waugh is going to score easily, making a big turnaround second, but coming back, an RBI double for Ryan Kirk. And Kelly's Pubs on the board, one nothing. Peter Hill started in on that ball, Lance, and uh, quickly realized that he was going in the wrong direction that sailed over his head to the fence. He did a good job recovering to keep Ryan Kirk at second base. And that'll score Waugh. And with the two-out catcher rule, Waugh goes right back out to second base with those wheels. So with Daniel Dalton coming up now and Waugh on second base, a, another hit here could produce another run and a big two-out rally in the home half of the first inning for the Bulldogs. And when you talk momentum, they're looking pretty good at this moment right now. Well, I don't know how much the wind played in that factor. Ryan Kirk drove that ball on a line. But the wind has turned around since 
yesterday and which is supposed to be northwesterly um, this morning it's a little bit light it's supposed to pick up later on so the ball won't be getting knocked down as much out in left field by the elements well that ball didn't look like it was hit as hard or as far as it was and it just seemed to carry and I think that was the case out there for Peter Hill as he started in on that ball like you said and it ended up over his head the other thing to consider, the Bollier wrestlers played both their games yesterday on Diamond 2. That ball is a long, loud foul ball that wow. ends up in the parking lot. Jeez, that went a long way, Lance. That actually hit, you're right, the parking lot went up to where the vehicles enter the parking lot here at uh, Caribou Complex. Well, since Daniel Dalton's return from his one-game hiatus, he has been on a tear. And swinging at that pitch and missing, but Matty Waugh is going to make the easy trot down to third base. And now some work to be done here. Scott Life trying to stop the bleeding and close the door here after just surrendering a two-out run. Dalton two for four with a couple of RBIs and the win over the Poly Plus Angels last night. Change up, and that's laced foul, and you can see Dalton dialed in as Scott Life decided to take something off that, and just, well, it, just couldn't keep that ball fair, but hit very hard down the line. I don't think you'll see Corey Cranbell throwing down the change up to Danny Dalton anymore this week. Probably not a good idea. You might either want to go with a rise up and out and get him to chase or something in the dirt. And he goes with a pitch up and out. Well, good call by our catcher, Lance Wynn. But Dalton, who seems to be completely locked in. Well, that's the thing. You see the way Dalton's swinging the bat, and you have to know that those last two pitches, probably not a good idea to give him another look at those. And that ball is chopped foul. So it seems like whatever life's got, Dalton is certainly on it. And it'll just be a matter of whether or not Dalton's able to cash this run here. Well, one of his two hits in last night's game was a big triple. And the way he's hitting the ball, that's no surprise. And missing down. So a good at bat here for Daniel Dalton. Well, what I'm noticing about Dalton here, not only is he making good swings, but he's got a very good eye around the plate this morning. Well, he does, and I mean, since his, you had to figure that with a big swing and a miss. So Scott Life wins that battle, striking out Dalton, striking out the side, but not before. A run manufactured by the Bulldogs. They lead this one one nothing through one complete. Back here in a moment. Back here for the top of the second inning, it'll be Mike Lawton followed by George Flotre and Peter Hill. The scheduled three batters for the Boulier wrestlers. Finally, a little bit of peace and quiet. <laughs> Concentrate on a ball game now. Yeah. Peter Gower is out. <laughs> That's just what I was going to say. And I mean both of them, too. I'm not just talking about one. Okay. 
<laughs> the peanut gallery has left the broadcast area well, for the time being. You know, like it's not even your game. Just <laughs> keep it down, will ya? Goodness, as that pitch missing in to Lawton. Lawton's played some third. He's playing first in this game today. He's 0 for 4 in the two games yesterday. Had a good round robin, though, so they're going to need their number five batter in this one. Well, that's the thing about this game, too, Chris. You big swing and a miss. Sometimes, you know, when you when you get to Sunday, it's almost like nothing else up to this point matters. This is a new, fresh start, and you can have a good run on a championship day, and people forget all about what you did <laughs> in the previous three, and you will, too. So I think that's one of the things. Is that one's tomahawk deep, and that ball is drifting, but Matthew Wah just inside the track makes the grab for the first out. Well, yeah, you've got the human dirt devil out there in Matthew Waugh, so it's going to take a sharply hit ball to either side of him. And on the left, he's got Eddie Heffern, who's no slouch, and Andrew Wade on the right. So the Kelly's Pub outfield, uh, one of the better outfields suited for this uh, large 265-foot ballpark. So one away now for George Flotre. <laughs> And that pitch from Walsh missing down. One ball, no strikes. One away here and a one nothing lead for Kelly's Pub. Rustlers trying to answer as Colin Walsh misses outside. 2-0. Flotre also 0 for yesterday, so same applies to him as it does Mike Lawton. And couldn't lay off chasing that rise ball and the count now two and one. Your Walsh, you got to be happy that Flo Trey chased that pitch. That would have been ball three. Got to be lucky to be good sometimes. And a good cut there from Flo Trey. Not able to keep it between the lines, but timing wise, right on Walsh and the count even at two and two. Another overcast morning. You can see that's a great shot of the skies there on the camera. Low cloud cover as per usual here in Newfoundland and Labrador. A high of 12 degrees Celsius today. Balmy. And a good drop off from Walsh. Sits down flow tray. Second strike out of the ball game for Colin Walsh. And that will bring up Peter Hill, the left fielder. Well, after the leadoff single by Jordan, Colin Walsh has settled in. Retired the next five batters. So important here for Walsh and the Bulldogs to have a quick inning, then get right back up to bat. Well, I think quick innings are going to be the order of the day for Colin Walsh and the Bulldogs. A long day for him on the mound yesterday as Kyle Linton is already warming in the left field line. And if they want to get through to the final, both guys are going to have to log significant time. And they have been splitting the duty. And can't argue that's a slow roller. Walsh fields it and over to first. So a good one, two, three inning for Colin Walsh. No runs, no hits, and nobody left the board. And we will head on down to the bottom of the second. Back here in a moment. the second inning here. Lance went alongside Chris Abbott. Good morning from the East Coast. Yeah, that's for sure, especially if you're up in Saskatchewan or we know that Scott Life has fans in BC, so good morning or good night. <laughs> yeah, it might still be yesterday in BC. So Brian Bubba Clark to lead things off here. Big swing and a miss. Had himself a big second game yesterday and he was instrumental in 
helping Kelly's overcome and, and win that ball game and advance to today's game here. Both sides of the ball for Briny yesterday for sure. And uh, earned himself a handshake from Lance Wynn on the way out of the ballpark. So. Well, most certainly. Anytime you lay down a bunt for a single and you have Mike Power up here questioning the guy's speed, and <laughs> he lays down a bunt single and plays flawless defense, gets a clutch hit, and as far as I'm concerned, he was yesterday's MVP in my opinion. And Brian's just a big game guy. And, you know, I actually played hockey against Brian when I was growing up. And, you know, doesn't look like the model of physical fitness, but he could skate faster than he looked as well. He can also run faster than you'd expect. Well, sometimes you got those guys that have got a lot of athletic ability, and that's a slow roller. Going to be a tough play, though, and a good play made there by the first baseman, Mike Lawton. So a good job to retire Brian Clark for the first out, and that'll bring up Steven Strap. So talk about guys who were heroic yesterday. Strap was on the bench through most of the round robin. All he did yesterday, two for two with a couple of doubles and RBIs, and uh, he and Clark were the catalysts in that game against the Angels. And that batting in the eighth spot, I believe, so Strap was also a man on a mission yesterday as he leaves that Scott Life pitch up around the eyes for ball one. Yeah, most pitches are up on Steven Strap. He's not a, a real big man, but he, you know what? He is a very tough out. Well, he was a real spark plug at the bottom of the order yesterday as that's a two hopper to second and there are two away. Strap was an all-Canadian utility player in 2014. Uh, raised a couple of eyebrows because it wasn't a name people expected, but having seen a lot of his games, uh, he did what he did yesterday, came through in the clutch and uh, did it quietly. So Eddie Hefferin will step in now uh, for his first look at Scott Life. Two away here. A one nothing ball game in favor of Kelly's Pub. Hefferin uh, Ofer with four Ks yesterday, but he did have a walk. And Life gas it up and brings it in for a called strike. And chasing that rise ball. So life a good job of working the entire zone. And Hefferin's in the hole now 0-2. And a swing and a miss. So life gets the job done. Climbing the ladder. Down goes Heffron. Four strikeouts in total for Scott Life. No runs, no hits, and nobody left aboard. We've played two complete. One nothing for the Bulldogs. Coming to bat for the Rustlers, Justin Seibert, number 37, playing right field. <laughs> Peanut Gallery has returned. Yes, actually it has in full effect, I might add, as we head to the top of the third inning. A one-run ball game in favor of Kelly's Pub. It'll be Justin Siebert, John Crenbill, then back to the top of the shop in Josh Jordan for the wrestlers. Don't know if Peanut would act, uh, adequately describe those guys. More like the Almond Gallery. Uh, yeah, Peanut does kind of uh, come up a little bit short, if uh, I would agree with you there. <laughs> Sometimes you got to deal with some other distractions. <laughs> Stay focused on the game up here, just like they, the players. We're trying, but boy... 
so Walsh back to work on a good changeup as he starts Sievert off with something a wee bit different there. He wasn't expecting that at all. I tell you what, Colin Walsh has really upped his game on the mound and uh, starting to make a believer out of a lot of people here this week. That pitch is grounded foul. Not sure what else he has to do. I mean, he's done, you know, he's pretty much carried this team. Well, he shut down the most potent offense for 10 innings yesterday. Came back and beat another good offense in the Saskatoon Angels last night. And he goes outside. So, <clears throat> excuse me, one ball, two strikes the count. And I shouldn't say he shouldered most of the load. He's, he has. Kyle Linton has certainly held up his end. And even though Kyle struggled a bit, he still managed to get the job done. We talked about him yesterday and not being as sharp as he normally was, but he ended up going six strong and mm -hmm. able to come up with the win. So that's really the bottom line. Well, the thing about Kyle Linton is literally and figuratively has big shoulders. So, you know, he can get out there and get the job done here today. No sweat. That pitch fouled off again, so Justin Sievert seen a lot of pitches here from Colin Walsh. Still behind in the count now, one ball, two strikes. I will say, though, for Sunday morning, not a bad crowd at all. Chris, I, I know you're going to pull out your counter, but that's, uh, no, I've that's been, still uh, impressive for a Sunday morning. I've had my attendance estimate privileges revoked, but I will say that the churches are probably a little more empty around St. John's today. Walsh back to work. Took something off that pitch, too. So, Sievert is having a good at bat. And... We'll see what adjustments Walsh makes here if he's going to close out this at bat. And that pitch, a slow roller, fielded by third baseman Mark Lewis over to first in time. So some good defense there. Retires Sievert. And that will bring up to number nine, hitter John Crenbill. I should also say, Lance, I know there's a lot of people that may have contemplated coming down this morning and said they'll come a bit later and are joining us on the stream here on softballcanada.tv. And uh, thanks to everyone for the kind comments that we've gotten this week. Listen, we love doing this stuff for you guys. So uh, it's a, a reciprocal relationship for sure. Big cut, swing and a miss there as a good pitch on the inner half of the plate from Walsh. It was a good pitch, but I think they wanted to go outside. Colin a little disappointed with his location and again may have gotten away with one. And a bunt attempt is foul. So trying to work that defense is John Crenbill. And making sure that Mark Lewis is on his toes there at third, but not able to keep that one in, fa in fair territory. And again, Colin Walsh now has set down seven wrestlers hitters in a row. That pitch is driven out deep, but going back and making a nice play out there was Eddie Hefferin for the second out of the inning. And thanks to Eddie Hefferin for not once again having me go negative one on the broadcaster's curse. <laughs> As I was talking about the batters, Colin Walsh has knocked down in a hard drive to left field, but Hefferin uh, smooth as silk out there. So back to the top of the shop in Josh Jordan. <clears throat> He's singled to lead off the ball game, but was left stranded at second base as Walsh going to the inner corner. And between him and Ryan Kirk, they certainly wanted that pitch. It must have been a touch inside. The height was perfect. And a good rise ball. So count even now, one ball and one strike to Josh Jordan. Lance, I don't know if our viewers can pick it up, but a Newfoundland flag has appeared hung on the center field fence just to the left of the transport truck out there and in front of the Coors Light uh, inflatable can. Somebody's placed a Newfoundland flag out there as 50% of the teams left in the tournament are from the host province. Well, we are in Newfoundland anyway, so I would... 
hope and expect to see a Newfoundland flag at some point in time. <laughs> and a good cut there from Jordan. And he didn't miss that pitch by much. Might be a good idea to make an adjustment, Colin Walsh, and with a 2-2 count. Yeah, Jordan, the only guy to get a hit off Walsh, singling back in the first inning. And he's on the ball again here in the second at-bat. 2-2, swing and a miss. Down goes Jordan. Good job by Colin Walsh. He sits him down. 1-2-3, no runs, no hits, and nobody left the board. We'll head to the bottom of the third. one nothing for Kelly's Pub. Welcome back to Pepperell Field here as we get set for <clears throat> excuse me the home half of the third inning. Kelly's Pub trying to add to their one nothing lead and it'll be Mark Lewis then back to the top of the shop and Colin Walsh and Jeff Evley or Evely sorry. Mark Lewis astonishingly has not got a hit yet in this tournament and has been dropped into the nine hole for Kelly's Pub. But uh, coaches Jim Dumphy, John Farrell, and Huey Clark know all too well what Mark's capable of and are just hoping that today is the day. Well, sometimes you rely on your team to carry you and then a good time to maybe step up. And, of course, Championship Sunday would be that opportune time. Saw Mark's girlfriend Danielle down here yesterday, and I can't quite get a look, but I'm sure she's here. They've got a new, I was gonna say a new baby, but we let's established. Well, let's be careful. No, okay. well. And there's the first hit of the tournament for Mark Lewis, as he delivers in his first at bat on Championship Sunday, and he just made the sign of getting the monkey off the oh, bat. <laughs> so that was impressive in itself. A leadoff single for Mark Lewis, yeah. and it'll take it back to the top of the shop and call it. Walsh. And Stephen Jesso has got a huge smile on his face clapping at him. So anyway, I was saying that Mark has a, Mark and Danielle have a new baby, but we established a couple of weeks ago that all babies are new. Well, that's yeah, actually when you when you put it that way, Chris, you're you're absolutely <laughs> right as a pinch runner will, runner will come in and run for Mark Lewis. So high fives all around from his teammates. Glad to see him Get off to Snide and pick that up, and they'll need him. And if he can get hot today, that will bode well for Kelly's Pub. So Walsh squares and takes the pitch high for ball one. Yeah, so Lewis, who, as we talked about earlier, was initially listed as the DP and switched to second base to come in for, uh, rather, third base. Uh, so now the default in Andy Wade, who's the right fielder, is eligible to run for Mark uh, with no penalty here. So Andrew Wade's at first base, leadoff man aboard, Walsh takes for ball two. And after the game yesterday where Kelly's Pub and all their fans here were imploring them to bunt, it looks like that the philosophy has changed some this morning. Well, now all of a sudden I think we've seen three butt attempts, and that was three more than we've seen almost all last game. A good one by Walsh, going to be tough play, but fielded nicely over there by George Flotre, and 
one out, but a good sack bunt by Colin Walsh. That was a real nice bunt and a great play by Flo Trey, who just got the top of the glove on that, coming across the infield, having to reach back. That's a real tough play. Flo Trey made it look good. So Jeff Evely now with a chance here to move the runner along. One away and a runner on second. And time is given. And that ball tomahawked out to left field. Base hit. Having to hold up, though, was Wade. Had to make sure it dropped. A one-out single by Jeff Evely. And Kelly's Pub's got something brewing here with runners on the corners now for Matthew Wah. Yeah, Wade runs well, but you're right. He had to hold up, make sure it got down. And also with your number three hitter and Matthew Waugh coming up, you want to make sure that you don't take away the runner in scoring position on him. So Wa uh, with a bunt single in his first at bat and probably a good time to have a bit of an infield conference. Well, this is a huge moment in this game here. One out, Kelly's threatening. You talk about sticking with guys, Jeff Evely and Mark Lewis both coming through here in the inning for the Bulldogs. So that's uh, that's huge for them. Well, Matty Wa, you look and we, just because we alluded to the bunt as something that sort of is a bit underrated. You talk about Matty Waugh, so he lays down the button. You know he's got great speed, but he can also drive something in the gap. So defensively now, you're on your toes because you don't know what he's going to do. And he takes a pitch that he felt was up, but it's called a strike, top of the zone, so 0-1. Yeah, that was almost a bit of a pitch out as Cranville stood up and they thought maybe Evely would be running. I don't expect to see Jeff Evely running in this situation. Well, he might be in order to draw the throw, but the infield is drawn in to cut off that run. And a good hard hit ball, base hit, Matty Waugh, run, one run's going to trot in, and rounding second and into third, Waugh will take second on the play, an RBI double for Matty Waugh, and in a blink of an eye, it's 2 nothing for Kelly's pub. And Waugh moves up on the throw, so a free 60 for Matthew Waugh, and a heads up base running for short, and an RBI. <laughs> So 2 nothing, and another couple of ducks on the pond here for Ryan Kirk. And all he's done is hit a double and cashed in a run in his first at bat. So the right guy's up at the right time here for the Bulldogs. And we see some action. Brian Newton going down to get loose in the Bullier bullpen. Imagine it's going to be a short leash for any of these pitchers here. You lose and you're done. So no sense keeping the gun in the holster as life misses up. Got to be careful with Ryan Kirk here. You do have the base open. And a swing and a foul. But Kirk can also get a little bit excited, and he chased that ball that was out of the zone. Well, you deal with Kirk or you take your chances with Daniel Dalton, and either way, both guys swinging the bat well. And then you've got Brian Clark and Steven Strap, so they're heating up, which this Kelly's Pub lineup is starting to look pretty impressive. So Scott Life goes out or half of the plate for a called strike, and a lot of moans and groans there as that pitch looked like it was way outside. But again, we just call the play, not the balls and strikes. 1-2, and that pitch is fouled off. You know, Mike Semchuk's done a good job on the plate this week for sure. So a big moment here in this ball game as a chance for Kelly's Pub to tack on a couple more with a clutch hit here and took something off and it gets away. So easily the run comes in to score. Evely with a free pass and Matty Waugh will head down to third. So one pitch and a run's in and the runners advance. Tough break for Cranville there. The changeup skipped on him and bounced in front of the plate, and he couldn't pick up. So 3-0 the score now for Kelly's Pub, and again, still one runner left on third. 
and taking and missing down. So the count now two and two. Well, Kelly's Pub are going to want to get another shot at the Mastodons as well. They played in their last round robin game, and it turned into a trampling by the Mastodons. Uh, Mercy rule victory nine to one. Wow, I'm sure that I'm sure they appreciate you getting a bit ahead of yourself as that pitch took a nice carom off the back screen. You already got the, the rustlers already ready to pack it in in the third inning and go on home there, Chris. Give the guys a chance, will you? Still got some ball to play here as Daniel Dalton now will be the batter with runners on the corners and one away. So, so far the difference has been Kelly's Pub is able to manufacture a run and then capitalize on some base runners. Wrestlers not quite able to do that in their limited opportunities, but you never know when your opportunity is going to present themselves, and it's important that you capitalize on each and every one of them that you get. We got a tweet coming in here from Joey Maynard from the Galway Hitman. He's included a picture. Says he's having breakfast with the family, enjoying the broadcast, and cheering for Kelly's Pub. And he said, "I enjoy the Skid Row reference." So just so everybody knows. The devil's music. Big swing and a miss from Daniel Dalton. And maybe needs to tone it down just a bit, a little over exuberant here, and settle in and focus. And that pitch is lifted out to center field, and it's going back. It's tailing at. Get out of this ballpark. A three-run home run for Daniel Dalton, and he has given Kelly's Pub a 6 nothing lead. Oh, wow. What a big moment in this game, and we saw it in his last at-bat. Danny Dalton was locked in, and the second baseman for the Kelly's Pub Bulldogs, also the Circle Tap Dukes, has made this one 6 nothing. The back for the Bulldogs, Brian Clark, number nine, first baseman. So Dalton again did a good job. He cut down on his swing a bit, but boy did he ever make perfect contact and sent that one to straightaway center field for a home run. Brian Clark's got to follow up that act, and he got a good cut off that pitch. Just missed. It didn't miss our camera, I'll tell you that, but uh, it's hung in there pretty good. That one went right back into your living room. So the crowd's still buzzing after that three-run shot from Daniel Dalton. And he has given Kelly's pub a... a guy named Gerald Goss? No, another press box over there. Oh, that one had that one. That one was all around the back of the building. Nice hat. Beautiful. You're brilliant, aren't you? Thanks a lot. And handcuffed. And... I believe a strike called, and yes, it was. So one ball, two strikes here to Bubba Clark, who wouldn't mind, I'm sure, keeping this rally going with one away as he chases a rise ball up. So Clark down on strikes for the second out, and that will bring up Steven Strap. You know, interesting development in this inning, Lance, where we saw the leadoff hitter get on, then get sacrificed over, and then five runs come into play afterwards without another out. So they go to the old school ball that didn't get a chance yesterday, and it's worked for them here today. Well, that's... <laughs> Well, that's part of the game, and sometimes it's not just about bunting to push that run along. It's to try and get the momentum and get your team in a positive setting where you now have a couple of base runners and you're able to put up a couple more runs, and that's exactly what Kelly's Pub has done. That pitch is a good one from life in there for a strike. If you look back in the first inning and Matty Wah with that bunt single and the way they manufactured a run with two out, and that sort of got Kelly's Pub rolling. Yeah, a little bit of small ball, a couple of singles, but of course the three-run bomb from Danny Dalton doesn't hurt things either. But of course with the runners on, Scott Life had to pitch to Dalton. And just got a piece of that. Did strap 
grounded out in his last at bat. That was an inning ago. And a count here, two and two. And that pitch looked pretty good, but looks like it was a ball, and the count now full, three and two. All the wrestlers, infielders, did that two-step shuffle towards the dugout, but they've got to stay for at least another pitch. Still action in the wrestlers' bullpen. And that ball is lifted up, going back and calling for it, making a tough play was Peter Hill, and he makes it and retires the side, but not before. A bomb, the long ball. Five runs put across this inning by the Bulldogs. They lead this one 6 nothing. back here in a moment. Coming to bat for the Rustlers, Troy Gordon, number 31, the shortstop. Welcome back here for the top of the fourth inning. It'll be Troy Gordon, Corey Crenville, and Dean Holine, the scheduled three hitters. And a good time for the wrestlers to get something going unless they already have their plane ticket that you've purchased for them. And well, I tell you one thing for in. certain is that I didn't purchase it for them. I might have helped them check in, but right. I tell you what, there's a very inconvenient light shining into our broadcast area. It's only been seen a couple of times this week. I believe people in the rest of Canada call this the sun well it has been MIA as that pitch is flared out and it's going to stay inside the diamond but in foul territory no man's land down the left field line all jokes aside though Lance if Bollier want to get back in this game they've got to start now they're in a deep hole six down yeah we're only halfway through but uh, you got to start chipping away because as we've discussed there's no six run home run available in the top of the seventh no and Colin Walsh certainly has his control going on here and He's not going to help the cause either as a good rise ball swing and a miss. Troy Gordon's not helping his own cause there as he wouldn't needed a step ladder to reach that one. Well, in his defense, it probably looked good initially, but the beginning and the end, two different stories. And Walsh comes with a drop ball outside corner for a called strike. So turn that K the other way, one away, and that'll bring up Corey Crenville. That's 10 straight retired by the lefty Colin Walsh on the mound for Kelly's Pub. So not only is he getting the job done, he's being economical in the process. So Crenville struck out in the first. So 0 for 1. Man, a bit of a high drop. Misses up and out. One ball, no strikes. And a swing and a miss. So you're right, being very efficient is Colin Walsh. And working with the battery of Ryan Kirk... They've done a good job of 
putting together some impressive sequences here as he goes back to the rise ball and no one has seen the same pitch twice. Well, much like Sean Clary and Ryan Bowen, these two guys have been working together for at least five or six years now, heading back to their minor ball days even before that. Change up in there for a strike, and it was a good one. I think that Crenville thought it was a bit up in the zone. But 2-2 two -two count nonetheless. And looking for that outside corner was Walsh not getting the call and the count's now full. And that ball's driven out deep, and you can get out of this ballpark. Talk about putting a oh. charge in one. Corey Crenbill launched one to center field, and the wrestlers are on the board now. They trail 6-1. to one. Well, I think that got over the ticket booth for the beer tent, which is at about 8 feet tall, and it's up against the 300-foot fence. So that would be... Um, Definitely one of the longest shots we've seen here this week. Well, Matua took one step and turned and watched it, so he knew it was gone. The other two fielders didn't even move, so clearly that ball was out of here in a hurry. And don't quite put those wrestlers on the plane yet. They may have a bit of a heartbeat or a pulse here with Dean Holine stepping in 0 for 1. Definitely got a heartbeat and a pulse now. That's going to get them fired up. Walsh missing outside. You talked about Matty Waugh taking a step and turning. The guy sitting outside the ticket booth got up and said, I might hit him. They sat back down and said, no, this is going over me too. <laughs> wow. That was a shot. Change up missing in. So Walsh needs to take a breath here, regroup a bit as he is behind in the count now 2-0 to Dean Holine. Well, much like we talked about, they can't hit a six-run home run. That ball fielded by Walsh over to first for the out. So some good defense there from Colin Walsh to retire Dean Holine, and that will bring up the first baseman, Mike Lott. The can hit a six-run home run, and Colin Walsh knows he can't give up a six-run home run. So no matter how far that one went, it's worth the same amount. He's still got a five-run lead, and he did a good job coming back to retire Holine. So Lawton now 0 for 1 with a fly out. And Walsh misses out. One ball, no strikes. Six to one as a home run from Corey Crenbill has given the wrestlers a bit of life here and trimmed the deficit to five. And that pitch lifted a mile high, settling under it, and calling for it is the shortstop. Jeff Ebley makes the play, and that will do it, but not before the wrestlers pick up one. They trail by five. We'll be back here for the bottom after this.
back here at Pepperell Field, Lance Wynn, Chris Abbott. New pitcher now in the circle for the Bouye Rustlers and Brian Newton, and he will face Eddie Heffron. Mark Lewis then back to the top of the shop in Colin Walsh, and it appears that there will be a pinch hitter for Kelly's Pub, and it will be Doug Marshall. And I don't think Doug Marshall, well, it looks like he's got a strike, so it must have, must have swung at the first pitch. <laughs> I think they just put one up on him now. Okay, just anyway, <laughs> just, he hasn't even seen the pitch yet. They start to count at 0-1 for Doug Marshall. As the veteran gets a chance in there to take his hacks as he fouls it up and out of play. Doug's pinch hitting for Eddie Heffern, who struck out five straight times, so Doug will come in and pinch hit, and no doubt Eddie will be re-entered in left field. Change up, and that is chop foul. Well, Scott Life pitched all the playoffs up until this point, but in the round robin, Brian Newton started three games for the Rustlers, throwing 11 and two-thirds, giving up 12 hits, seven earned runs, striking out 13, and he has a one and two record through the round robin. Well, Brian Newton's been around for a while. He's no stranger to this game or international competition as he blows away Doug Marshall for the first out of the bottom of the fourth inning. So that'll bring up Mark Lewis, who picked up his first hit of the tournament in his last at bat. It was a single, and he came around to score the second run for Kelly's Pub. And that ball is flared out, but that's going to find the fence on the left side. Well, Louie with a hit in his back pocket, that's excellent news for Kelly's Pub. So that has him and Bubba Clark and Stephen Strapp and a few more guys, Jeff Evely, hitting their stride this morning. That's excellent news for the Newfoundland representative. Well, you figure on Championship Sunday, you're going to need all your guns a-blazing. And Mark Lewis offensively a big part as that change up, miss up in the zone. And Brian Newton's got a very good change. If you've never seen him toe the rubber, good change, good velocity. And Lewis taking, and yes, he did go. So didn't get the benefit of that call. Said he went around, and now he's in the hole. One ball, sorry, two balls, two strikes is the count. Jocelyn Lacroix, very forthright with that call. And again, that one is lifted up and will drift foul. So Newton back to work here, and that pitch is a two-hopper and under the glove there of Troy Gordon. And I know he's your buddy. I don't know if you're going to give him a hit on that, but that looks like it's an E6. It's E6, but we put the ball in play and found a way to get on base. So if you're the Bulldogs and if you're Mark Lewis, you don't really care right now. Stats go out the window. They already gave out the tournament awards. So you just want to get that medal around your neck and figure out what color you can earn. Yeah, it's nothing like the tournament awards when the tournament's not over. So Colin Walsh back to lead things off. I mean, to back to the top of the shop in Colin. Colin Walsh, 0 for 1 with a beautiful sack bunt, and that pitch from Newton inside for a ball. You know, Lance, as well as Colin's done on the mound, he's had a great week at the plate as well, and sometimes when pitchers are focusing on their mound game, you know, the, the hitting goes aside, so, you know, really, really got to give it to Colin. And a swing and a miss. Would probably like to be a little more disciplined than that. That's a good pitch inside, but definitely a ball. But there also comes a point, these people are obviously human. There comes a point with today and, uh, you know, all the running around, there's sometimes you want to get, let your pitcher get some rest. You're right about that as Newton misses out and the count two and one. You're right, and when you talk about how instrumental Walsh has been, that's offensively and defensively. As a cut there, fouled straight back, and you know you like your your big guns to be warm, but you don't want them to be fatigued. Mm -hmm. I hear exactly what you're saying, in particular. But you know, knowing Colin Walsh, if you took the bat out of his hand, he'd only get upset. 
And that pitch is out into center field. A late jump, but making the play out there was John Crenville. And that for the second out of the inning, a fly ball. And that will bring up Jeff Evely. As Colin Walsh is the definition of youthful exuberance in his early 20s. He's having success. And, you know, sometimes the coach maybe needs to look out for the best interest. But, you know, it's not hot out there. And these guys are loving these conditions, as a matter of fact, on the field. Talk to Shane Boland tonight. He said it's great weather to play in, or last night. So Evely now one for two with a strikeout, but he's also scored a run. And that pitch missing up. Yeah, that changeup I think got away from Newton, and uh, Cranville was able to uh, snag it in, so they didn't have the runner move down to second. And that pitch is in there for a strike. So Newton gets back in the count now. It's two and one. And looking to get this final out here. And would go a long way to give him the rest of some help. A two hopper knocked down and a throw in time. So a good job by George Flotre as he stays with it and retires Evely for the final out of the inning. No runs, no hits, and one runner left aboard. We're about to head to our slide to five. Six one in favor of Kelly's Pub. Coming to bat now for the Rustlers, George Floater, number nine, third base. Welcome back as some of the people here disturbing the peace, but we do our slide to five in a 6-1 ball game in favor of Kelly's Pub. It'll be Flotre followed by Peter Hill and Justin Sievert for the wrestlers. Did a good job of holding the Bulldogs and keeping them off the board in the bottom of the fourth. Time now to continue to chip away here at this five-run lead. I really like George Flotre's game defensively here today, Lance. Does a good job. That pitch is a long run for Matty Waugh. Hung up there just a bit too long for the speedy Waugh as he runs under it and records the first out of the fifth. Waugh, the 2016 All-Canadian center fielder as he was named to the All-Star team last night. And yeah, he makes the those plays that would be tough on anybody else look just routine. So Peter Hill now steps in 0 for 1 with a ground out. And he too is bun attempt. He can't get her down and he's in the hole now 0 and 1. So what we're seeing is guys who are having a bit of trouble for the wrestlers trying to get on base anyway at all here. And that pitch floated in there from Walsh but misses inside 1 and 1. Well, you go from a day where guys just refuse to lay it down to a day where guys understand <laughs> that this is a life-or-death situation. Big cut there from Peter Hill. 
and just got a piece of it, so he's in the count. Now. He's in the hole now, one and two. That also got a piece of Mike Semchuk, so he's going to go out and clean off the plate and take a minute just to walk that one off here behind the plate. Well, we talk about some of the occupational hazards for the catcher. The same applies for the umpires. Certainly the home plate umpire has a swing and a miss. So Walsh challenged Peter Hill and won the battle. Five strikeouts in the ball game for Walsh and Justin Sievert now, the right fielder, will step in working on an 0 for 1 ball game. And Walsh with a pitch, a good one. And you see Sievert. Trying to get out of the way on a pitch that really looked like it may have caught some of the plate. <laughs> some theatrics. And a swing and a miss. Head out on that. So Walsh with a good rise ball. Evens the count now one and one. And a swing and a miss. Well tardy on that fastball with Seabird. And he's got some work to do now with a one-two count. Colin Walsh continuing to work ahead. We haven't seen him fall behind batters. And a change up. One hopper to third. And Mark Lewis took a double pump, able to sign the ball, get an autograph, get it over to first, and that's the inning. So 5-3 on the put out. One, two, three. Down go the rustlers quietly in the fifth. We'll continue our slide to five. Six one ball game. Back in a moment. score of the game right now is Kelly's Pub 6 and the Rustlers 1. Coming to the plate now for the Bulldogs, number eight, the center fielder, Matthew Waugh. Back here at Pepperell Field, Lance Wynn, Chris Abbott. Glad you've decided to wake up and have some brekkie with us here. A 6-1 ball game in favor of the Bulldogs leading the Boulier Rustlers. It'll be Matthew Waugh, Ryan Kirk, then Daniel Dalton. The meat of the order up for Kelly's Pub. And we'll see here if they can get back the run they surrendered an inning ago. Well, Matty Waugh is doing what they brought him here to do, which is contribute on Championship Sunday. A couple of singles, a couple of runs scored in an RBI. Takes that pitch from Newton for a strike on the outside corner. Matty Waugh, two for two. He's scored two runs and swiped the base as well. So instrumental right now in the Bulldogs attack. That one is driven out to the gap in left center. That's going to go all the way to the wall. Matty Waugh rounding second base. He's going to head. The throw comes in nowhere near in time. A leadoff stand-up triple for Matty Waugh. If Waugh wanted to force the issue there, Lance, he could have had a legitimate inside the park home run. He held up at third base. The ball was still on its way to the cutoff man in short left field. I think in a different scenario, he certainly might have rounded third and given that a go but you've got Ryan Kirk up and he's been pretty tough he's one for one with a walk and a run scored and throw an RBI in there as well and you can see why it was easy for Wad to pull up at third base well, of course, the way the rest of this order is hitting, uh, you know, we talked about Walsh and Wall, but now Kirk, Dalton, Clark, Strap in order coming up next. Uh, Got to like that. Well, that's what you want if you're Kelly's pub. So sometimes through the week, certain guys are going to carry you, and it's not always the same guy. But when you come to the last day of the tournament, championship day, you want everybody contributing, and right now that's what Kelly's pub's getting. 
The 1-1 one -one is driven out for a base hit to left. Matthew Waugh had to hold up, but he will score easily. Another RBI for Ryan Kirk. And again, the six-run lead is restored by the Bulldogs. Well, the boys from the Goulds area of St. John's are doing it here today. Colin Walsh, Ryan Kirk, Danny Dalton, all from the same area, all grew up together. And they're putting a beating on the softball. Daniel Dalton now steps in, looks at a pitch outside for ball one. And they really made putting that run across the board look easy. Wow, with the leadoff triple and then Kirk with a solid single. And you blink of an eye three pitches later and it's 7-1 lead now for the Bulldogs. And going to be tough to bounce back from this. Not sure if you're... If the uh, wrestlers have got their airline reservations quite yet, <laughs> no help from you, <laughs> Mr. Rabbit. I'm not sure on their flight plans for sure, but now they've got another thing to look out for. They've got to keep another run for scoring or they don't get a chance to come back to the plate. And that's where it gets a little tricky here. If the Bulldogs continue keeping the pedal to the metal here, they could close this game out in impressive fashion as Dalton with a good hack there, but it's fouled out of play. Boy, I don't know what Danny Dalton had for breakfast, but I'm going to subscribe to it because he is firing on all cylinders this morning. Well, not sure. Sometimes with that whole melee and the one-game suspension, he has figured that he wants to contribute as that's a hard shot through the left side base hit. As Dalton continues on his tear, second hit of the ball game follows that up. That was a home run in his last at bat. So a solid single moves the runner along. Two men aboard now for Brian Bubba Clark. And of course, botanists can play fastball too, and I fully support Mr. Bubba Clark in all his endeavors. And I look forward to my next trip here, and we'll be able to spend some time as it looks like the 2 0 catcher rule will be in play, but that's going to be a little hard since <laughs> there's, there's nobody, nobody yeah. out. I was thinking that it would be a good time to run for Ryan Kirk out there. And is that a 13? That looks like, Liam is, Myers. looks like Liam Myers is out at second base. So he will run for Ryan Kirk. And you know what? I'm, I'm impressed by that move because when I saw Kirk get on base as the winning run, I thought to myself it would be a good chance to have a guy who was a little quicker get out there. And uh, Liam Myers would have been my pick off the bench or Tony Mead. So the boys are doing a good job over on that Kelly's Pub bench. And we're going to see our third pitcher of the morning for the Bullier wrestlers. And it'll be Greg Hill. So he will tow the rubber when we come back after this short break. So George Hill has finished taking his warm-up pitches, taking over for Brian Newton here in this critical juncture of the game. 7-1 to one in favor of Kelly's Pub. A single here will end this ball game. So a chance for Bubba Clark to seal this one and have the Bulldogs move along to meet the Mastodons in the semifinal game. That game is scheduled for 1.30 Newfoundland time, which is about two and a half hours from now. They have a Masters Championship game due up here on Diamond One next. 
And a swing and a miss. So a good pitch from Hill gets Clark to chase that one inside and the count now one and one. And while we won't be broadcasting that Masters game, we will leave the camera feed up so you will be able to watch and get the PA feed uh, if you're a Masters fan. A one hopper and a tag made and over to first in time. So a double play there, courtesy of Josh Jordan as he handles the DP himself. So a double play as the Rustlers keeps their pulse alive and it will be Steven Strap now called on to deliver a clutch two out hit here if the Bulldogs want to end this game early. Yeah, runner on third for the Bulldogs. Steven Strap, a clutch hitter up. I think the flight attendants are going through the seatbelt buckling and ear mask demonstration right now. <laughs> I'm sure the wrestlers appreciate that as Strap would love to deliver here. That ball scoots away, but not far enough to allow the runner to trot in here as Liam Myers is at third and heads up. He would should be getting a good jump down there at third if anything gets away from Corey Crenbill then this game could be over via the wild pitcher pass ball as well and that pitch from Hill in there for a strike. Greg Hill's been primarily used as a mop-up guy here this week. 6.1 innings pitched. He's got seven strikeouts and ironically the best ERA on the team. So trying to stop the bleeding here and kill the rally as that ball's up the middle, base hit and this ball game is over. Steven Strap, the hero, as he delivers the winning RBI, cashing in Liam Myers as an 8-1 win for Kelly's Pub. And as per expected, the flight is on time for the wrestlers. And when you look at this ball game, Chris, you, you got to think that the Kel Kelly's Pub Bulldogs are rolling on all cylinders at just the right time. Well, just a big third inning. They exploded for five runs, all keyed by that Colin Walsh sack bunt. And then they went from there, Dalton, with the big blast. Walsh picks the win, one run. And the biggest part, I think, Lance, is getting out of here in five innings if they want to make a run into the gold medal game this afternoon. So a good ball game. We will reset and be back here. Stick around if you want to join the Legends final. But it'll be Kelly's Pub, the Master. Mastodons. Big matchup, semifinal game. Stick around here on Ballpark Broadcasting.